SpaceX versus NASA. Who will be first to set foot on the moon again? My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. We are going, but who will be first? In the last few years, a strange situation has been evolving most of us wouldn't have seen coming back then. First of all, NASA wants to go to the moon again, this time to stay permanently. Secondly, a private company called SpaceX might steal their show with their own idea of a launch system called Starship and Super Heavy. But why am I choosing this topic right now? There has been some very interesting news recently that I will talk about at the end of the episode that makes this comparison very interesting to look at. But more on that at the end of today's episode. Both NASA and SpaceX have announced plans and are already in the construction phase of a manned moon mission. In today's episode, I want to compare these two plans with you, their progress and their possible outcomes. So let's dive right into today's exciting topic. Let's start with a closer look at who is competing for the next giant leap. NASA, the veteran. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, is a United States federal government agency responsible for the civilian space program as well as aeronautics and aerospace research. Established in 1958, NASA is the successor to the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, or NACA. The new agency was to have a distinctively civilian orientation, encouraging peaceful applications in space science. Since its establishment, most US space exploration efforts have been led by NASA. Their biggest achievements, the Apollo program and landing the first human on the moon, Skylab, the first space station, the Space Shuttle, a reusable transport system with unprecedented capabilities, Hubble, a telescope in space giving us views no one could have imagined before, Mars rovers traveling on our neighbor, and honestly, countless of other major achievements. So many, I couldn't fit them all into one episode. Today, NASA is a huge organization with over 17,000 employees and a budget of over $20 billion per year. NASA has 10 so-called field centers at its main facilities located all over the United States, from California to Florida. In short, NASA is the biggest space agency in the world. No other nation in the world comes close to having a space program as big as the United States of America. But what about it? How can such a huge agency have a serious competitor when it comes to sending an astronaut to the moon? SpaceX, the underdog. Space Exploration Technologies Corporation, or SpaceX as they are widely known, is a private US aerospace manufacturer and space transportation service company headquartered in Hawthorne, California. This picture is not photoshopped or a joke. This is what NASA is up against. SpaceX was founded in 2002 by Elon Musk with the goal of reducing space transportation costs to enable the colonization of Mars. Whenever Elon Musk founds a company, he has a very clear idea or master plan as he calls it. For SpaceX, the first stage of that plan is to reduce cost of orbital launches as much as possible. So what are SpaceX's major achievements so far? Building an orbital launch vehicle called Falcon 9. Developing orbital launch vehicles into partial reusability. Developing a cargo and a crew capsule called Cargo and Crew Dragon. Launching Falcon Heavy, a partial reusable heavy launch vehicle. Developing and launching the company-owned satellite constellation Starlink. Developing and flying the first ever constructed methane full-flow stage combustion cycle engine. At first, this might seem small compared to what NASA can show off. But you might notice one crucial difference here. SpaceX is a specialist. All their achievements have something to do with advancing new technology in the space transportation sector. Most of these achievements have at least been considered or prototyped by much bigger competitors. None of them managed to bring the projects into reality though. So if there's one thing we can say about SpaceX by now, it's that they have really good engineers and a very open mind to new approaches. Both companies have a plan of returning humans to our closest neighbor. But what about it? How are these two vastly different competitors approaching the task of bringing a human back to the lunar surface? NASA's SLS. The Space Launch System, or SLS, is NASA's crown jewel when it comes to rockets. A super heavy lift launch vehicle supposed to replace the Space Shuttle. 
It's hard to tell since when it's been under development, but it's safe to say that NASA has been working on it at least since 2010's Authorization Act. It is the primary launch vehicle of NASA's deep space exploration plans, including the planned crewed lunar flights of the Artemis program and a possible follow-on human mission to Mars. Built almost entirely from older Space Shuttle era designs, its first stage will have a total thrust output of 39,440 kilonewtons, making it just slightly stronger than the Saturn V's first stage. Due to the high weight of the Orion capsule, it will not be able to carry Artemis astronauts all the way down to the lunar surface though. A lunar gateway station will be needed as a stopover. There are only rough estimations, but it could cost up to $35 billion to develop the rocket, build it and do flights until 2025. And NASA is far into development already. Internals, boosters and the capsule itself, including the in-flight abort system, have been tested and are almost ready to go into the assembly phase. The project is controversial though, as SLS was originally supposed to fly by 2017 and the budget estimation is way above the originally planned $7 billion. One SLS launch could easily cost $500 million plus, not factoring in the development costs of the rocket. SpaceX is Starship and Super Heavy. Now here come the Mariachi and their shiny stainless steel monster rocket. Unveiled in September 2017 by Elon Musk's Starship and Super Heavy are a very different approach compared to NASA's SLS. Fully reusable, built out of stainless steel and capable of in-orbit refueling. Its estimated thrust output of 70,000 to 90,000 kN will, if SpaceX succeeds, make the launch system tower above anything that's ever been developed. Its Raptor engine, the first ever flown methane-powered full-flow staged combustion engine, was already successfully tested earlier this month, when Starhopper, a rudimentary test demonstrator for the rocket's engine, took off in Boca Chica, Texas, one of SpaceX's two construction sites for Starship prototypes. And the project could not be more unusual. From its execution in the open for everyone to see, to its very ambitious schedule of first orbital prototypes making it into space possibly by the end of this year, to a total estimated budget of around 5 to 10 billion dollars according to Elon Musk, Starship and Super Heavy are hard to compare to anything the launch provider market has ever seen. With its full reusability, launch costs are reduced to fuel, pad and rocket maintenance and salary for the staff. Musk stated that a Starship launch will cost less than a Falcon 9 launch at $50 million. In fact, Elon once stated that it might be as cheap as $20 million to launch a Starship Super Heavy stack into orbit with 150 tons of payload on board. This would make almost every other launch system in the world obsolete. SpaceX is right now planning to land cargo on the moon with a Starship in 2021 and fly humans around it in 2023 with the Deal Moon project. Financed partly by Yusaku Maizawa, a Japanese entrepreneur, the Deal Moon project will send artists from all around the world on a week-long trip around the moon to inspire them for new art projects. Recent reports of Maizawa being broke are fails, by the way. He dropped on the Japanese Forbes list from 18 to 22, but his net worth is reported to be still beyond $2 billion. The Controversy I asked this question on another What About It episode before. Is SLS worth it and shouldn't NASA at least consider another solution? If Starship is ready in time, wouldn't it be the better solution? And shouldn't NASA at least consider Blue Origin's proposed lunar lander? Why is NASA throwing billions of dollars at a project that frankly looks very outdated even before its first launch? Briefly in 2018, NASA considered using Falcon Heavy or Delta IV Heavy to transport the Orion capsule and its service module into space, dock them and then send them towards the moon to meet the back then proposed 2020 launch window. The idea has been discarded though. and. SLS is supposed to do the job. Now here comes what I was talking about at the beginning of the episode. The silver lining. Yesterday on July 30s, NASA finally announced its private partners to work together with them on the Artemis program. And there are a few very interesting bits of information in said announcement. It is split into a few major sections of cooperation. Advanced communications, navigation and avionics. Advanced materials. Entry, descent and landing. In-space manufacturing and assembly, power, propulsion and other exploration technologies. Now here it comes. 
Those who studied the announcement closely might have noticed that SpaceX is mentioned several times and it is mentioned as follows. Under the entry propulsion it says, SpaceX will work with Glenn and Marshall to advance technology needed to transfer propellant in orbit. An important step in the development of the company's Starship space vehicle. Under entry, descent and landing it says, SpaceX of Hawthorne, California will work with NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida to advance their technology of vertically landing a large rocket on the moon. This includes advancing models to assess engine plume interaction with lunar regolith. Just to get this straight, NASA wants to have SpaceX actively develop a way to refuel a rocket in space and propulsively land it on the moon. Does that sound familiar to you? What the announcement describes is Starship and Super Heavy. And it is an announcement of active collaboration, giving SpaceX access to NASA's facilities and funding to accelerate development. And it goes even further. On July 24th, Jeff DeWitt, NASA's chief financial officer, told Business Insider that if Musk and SpaceX pull off a private moon landing in 2021, they'll partner with them and get there faster. This means NASA is actively helping SpaceX to speed up development of two major factors for a successful moon mission with a Starship. It also means that NASA's chief financial officer will agree to use Starship for the Artemis program and possibly beyond Mars if SpaceX can pull off a landing in 2021. Now don't get your hopes too high. SpaceX is far away from landing a rocket on the moon by 2021, but there is a chance of success. This makes the early tests in Boca Chica, Texas and soon Cocoa, Florida even more important. If nothing goes wrong, SpaceX could be the company to return humans to the moon again and frankly that would make a whole lot of sense. NASA could concentrate on doing science and leave the transportation side to a company that's already revolutionized the business. Now what better to do after such a news than to look at a few Starship updates from the crew that's building our dream. Starship Prototype Updates The bulkhead has been installed into Orbital Prototype Mark 1. These bulkheads are needed to separate tanks and structures inside the rocket and to give structural integrity. Internals are being built, bringing us one step closer to orbital testing. In this picture you can see the next additions to the orbital prototype. The nose cone to the just installed bulkhead and something that to me looks like a thrust frame adapter. This is the part that transfers the generated thrust from the engines to the load bearing structure of the rocket. In case of the orbital prototype, this part would be rated to at least withstand 6000 kN of thrust, possibly even more. So there you have it, NASA is considering Starship for the moon landing and SpaceX is full thrust ahead on construction of the orbital prototypes. If this isn't great news, I don't know what is. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. Will NASA consider Starship as an alternative for the moon landing and will SpaceX manage to land on it by 2021? As always, tell me in the comments. Now the end of the episode is always reserved for some very special people, my patrons. And as always, I can butcher some names on the list. Please give a warm welcome to Martin Wikström. I hope that was right. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe and like as this helps me the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content as this gives me the time to focus on what I love doing the most. To bring you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. Mm -mm, he doesn't have an idea of the master plan. Way below, no above. Now here come the mariachi and their shiny sti shiny stiny on the moon. Why so serious? I asked this episode on another world congress before. Ah, this is done. Episode finished. There we go.